Now that we've got our Firebase function set up to dispatch push notifications whenever a new activity feed item is created for a given user, we want to display the content of that notification for the appropriate user at the bottom of the page. So we need to think about this critically. Where do we want to set up push notifications within our Flutter app so that we can display this snack bar at the bottom of every page. So to tell the user across the app, hey, a user's liked or commented on a given post of yours, etc. And in my view, the best place to do that is within the home.dart file, because that's where we're setting up the auth screen. So for build auth screen, we're returning a scaffold. And in that is where, as we know, we're creating all of our navigation, all the different pages in our app. And so to display a snack bar across all of these declared pages for the children of page view, we just have to associate with the scaffold wrapping all of these pages a given key. So working backwards a bit, we can associate the key of that scaffold with a variable called scaffold key. And we're familiar with setting this up already. We just need to create a global key, which we'll do in home state, a final scaffold key that is a global key and it needs to be of type scaffold state and that's going to enable us to say scaffold key dot current state dot show snack bar and pass in our created snack bar widget to it so now we can display our snack bar across our pages but at this point we need to configure push notifications in our flutter app so we're going to do that with the help of a package called Firebase Messaging. So here within home.dart, we're going to create a variable called underscore Firebase Messaging so that it's scoped to this page. And we're going to use the Firebase Messaging package to create a widget of the same name, Firebase Messaging. And the variable is going to be of type Firebase Messaging. And now we need to think about when do we want to set up push notifications in our app. And ideally, we'd want to do that when a user is authenticated, when they've signed up or signed in. So we need to do that within handle sign in. So if we go down to the handle sign in function, we're going to do that after is auth is set to true. So to configure push notifications, we'll create and execute a variable of the same name, configure push notifications. And this is going to be a synchronous function. It's not going to need to be async. So I don't have to worry about using await in front of it. So for this, we first want to get our user. We need to get our currently authenticated user data. And we can do that in a similar fashion to how we did it in create user and Firestore, where we used our Google sign in reference dot current user and put that in its separate variable. So we can just copy this line within create user and Firestore and paste it into our new function. So what's the first thing that we need to do? Our user signs in. We either create a user in Firestore or set the current user. And then we display our auth screen and we configure push notifications. Well, the first step of configuring push notifications is asking if the user wants to get notifications. We don't have to do anything for this for Android. It's going to by default show a little modal to ask whether we want it or not, but we have to add some code for iOS. So first we need to do what's known as platform detection, device detection. We need to see if the user is using an iOS device or an Android device. And we can do this by using the package dart.io. So we'll import that up at the top. And that enables us to use a conditional within configure push notifications and say if platform, that determines what platform or device the user is using, platform is iOS, then we want to get iOS permission. So we'll create this function. And this is going to use our Firebase messaging reference. And we need to call a function named request notification permissions. And here we can configure different notification settings. This isn't too important. And we do that with a function called iOS notification settings. So we can configure things like 
whether to use a badge for the notification, if we want it to be an alert or use sound. And I'm just going to set all of these to true. And then for getting the data as to whether a user's requested notification permissions or not, enabled push notifications, we can say Firebase messaging dot on iOS settings registered dot listen. This sets up an active listener. So whenever these settings are configured, we'll get back the settings right here within the callback. And we can just print the line settings registered and then interpolate what's in the settings variable. Now what's next? Well, back within configure push notifications, we need to get a notification token and associate it with our user data. As we saw in creating our function, that's what we were checking for when getting our user data. If we had this Android notification token, what we were calling Android notification token off of the user's document. So in order to get our token, we just need to say Firebase messaging dot get token. And this is assuming we've enabled push notifications. Get token returns a future. So we say get token dot then. And we get our token in the callback. And for now, let's print it to see that it's being provided to us. And we'll print the line Firebase messaging token and interpolate that again. We'll put it on a separate line. And then to associate with our user, we can just say users ref. And here's where we use our user data in our user variable, users ref dot document and pass in the user ID from user dot ID. And then we can call update data and set the new key, key value pair Android notification token to the token that we're getting in our then statement. Make sure it's spelled correctly, the same as in our Firebase function. And now that we have our token and are associating it with our user, we can send that notification to the app. So in order to configure how these notifications are displayed, we use the function, again off of Firebase messaging, called configure. And configure provides to us three different callbacks, one called on launch, another called on resume. And for each of these functions, we get access to our message, where if we examine it back within our function, our message is just a map or an object with strings as keys and a dynamic value for its values, associated values. So we need to provide the required parameter message, and it's going to be a map of type string and dynamic. And each of these callbacks are async. They're async functions. So we're going to have on launch, on resume, and on message. So what do these different callbacks refer to? Well, on launch corresponds to when we want to send a push notification to our users for when the app is off. The user is not using the app whatsoever, and on launch is going to be executed and display the notification to that user in such an event. For on resume, that's when the user is using the app, but just has it in the background. They're using another app at the same time and we send them a message with on resume so that they see it and go back to the app at that point. And on message is what we want. On message is for sending push notifications to our users while they're actively using the app. So I just wanted you to be aware of these different callback functions so we can comment them out and just handle on message. So first of all, it's good to print the message that we're getting for debugging purposes. So we can just say on message and print that message on a separate line. And if we head back to our function, we see that we want a couple of values from it. We don't really need the token. We don't need to be concerned with that, but we do need the body 
of the notification to display the message, and we also need the user ID on this recipient property in data in order to make sure we're displaying this message to the correct user. So we're going to get from message the object notification and from that body, and then also the object data and from that recipient. So we'll make a string, a final string variable, recipient ID, and we're going to take our message map and get from it the key data, and then within that recipient, and then another variable called body, and we're going to get that from the notification object, and within that, the body property. So whenever a new activity feed notification is created, it's going to be broadcast across our app. So we want to display it and display a snack bar only for the user whose recipient ID matches their current ID stored within user.id. So we need to add a conditional here that says if recipient ID is not equal to user.id or rather is equal to user.id only in that event do we want to display the notification. So here let's just print the line notification shown and then let's create our snack bar. So we'll make a snack bar variable that's of type snack bar and for this widget we need to provide content as a text widget and this is what we'll pass body to. If the text widget is longer than our snack bar, we want to set overflow to overflow dot clip or ellipsis or something like that. I'll set it to overflow dot ellipsis and that should be text overflow dot ellipsis and then to display it again we'll use scaffold key dot current state dot show snack bar and pass in the created snack bar that we have. Otherwise, if this condition is not met, we can print the line notification not shown. So now that should be it in order to set up push notifications for our app and display them. So let's save home.dart and do a hot restart. And then we should be taken back to our timeline. If we look at our debug console, we should see a Firebase messaging token printed. And now to confirm that this works, we can make a couple of changes to our app, namely by going to the post.dart file. And specifically for add like to activity feed, we can add a like to our own post to see a notification for it by removing the conditional if is not post owner, both for this function as well as remove like from activity feed. So we'll be able to add an activity feed item for ourselves. And we can do the same for the comments.dart file where we're adding a comment, we can remove that if is not post owner conditional. And from there, we'll save both files, we'll do a hot restart. And once our app reloads, we'll navigate to our profile and we'll select a post. And if we like our own post or re like it, if we check out our debug console we see on message the print line containing our message map notification with title set to null, body like to read like your post, and the data object containing the recipient ID. So we see notification shown. And if we navigate back to a page that's one of the children of the page view within build auth screen, we see read like your post. We see that snack bar there. So push notifications are showing up, and if we go to the comments screen, and the reason we're not seeing this notification on either the comments screen or on our individual post screen is because these aren't directly connected to the scaffold that we're displaying within build auth screen the snack bar is only going to be shown within one of these pages that are children of the scaffold widget. So if we add another comment saying 
you know, excellent post. When that's submitted, we can navigate back from comments. And we see on our profile page, excellent post. And the same will work for following another user. However, since the other user, we can't test that right now, since the other user doesn't have an Android notification token associated with their user data. But what I can do quickly is just sign into this other user, Abe, and follow the user that I'm currently logged in as that's accepting push notifications. So now I'm signed in as Abe, and I'm going to unfollow and refollow Reed, who accepts push notifications. So I'll select Reed's profile, and then unfollow and refollow him. And when I navigate to my debug console, I see at the end the notification for it. And the body is Abe started following you, but it is not displayed within the profile page. We see notification not shown, and that's because the recipient ID matches with Reed, but it doesn't match with Abe, who I'm signed in as. So with that, we've enabled push notifications that allows for real-time updates, real-time alerts to users about other user interactions in relation to them within our app. And finally, as a last note, make sure back within your comments and your post.dart file to re-add the if is not post owner conditional to make sure you don't get notifications for your own actions within the app.